In doing the research for this course, some of the absolutely very best and some of the very worst books I've read were on Le Mans Saint Michel. There have been and are good, hard, scholarly books of historical and architectural analysis, but many of the books are simply flights of poetic imagination and pseudo-historical fantasy. And some books are actually combinations of the two. And one of those books I have on your bibliography is Henry Adams' book, Mont Saint-Michel and Chartres. Adams exhibited a grasp of the Middle Ages like no scholar since. But when you read the book, you come away from Mont Saint-Michel and Chartres uh, a little short on the facts. And he admits he plays fast and loose with dates, and he makes some aesthetic connections that may seem a little bit dubious to us. But that, of course, may be the spirit of his age. He was writing at the turn of the last century. But things get very interesting and bizarre when you pick up modern works on Mont Saint-Michel, because they're many times worse than of dubious value. It is, for instance, very popular now amongst historians of a decidedly anti-Christian bent who have a penchant for trying to prove that Christianity is nothing but an accumulation of various and sundry pagan rites to center many of their arguments around the monastery of Mont Saint-Michel. For instance, you will often see it postulated in modern works that before the Christians arrived there, the island was the center of a vast Druidic cult. And some even postulated it was not Druids there, but Druid S's who were on the island. And even the politically correct Great Earth Mother has made her appearance on the island. It is said that this island was the, one of the major centers of her worship before the monks got there. And what the monks did was simply take the worship of the Great Earth Mother and turn it into a secret monastic cult of the Black Virgin, for which there is not a single shred of evidence anywhere in the records. But most importantly, Mont Saint-Michel appears now as part of the great Neolithic stone alignments. You're looking at one of the stone alignments from Karnak in Brittany. And it is said that Mont Saint-Michel is in a critical spiritual point in these alignments which run from Scotland to the island of Delos to Mount Carmel in Palestine. Now, a lot of this connection of Mont Saint-Michel and the great stone alignments actually come from the fairy tales of the 18th century of Normandy and Brittany. For instance, one of the records or fairy tales that was recorded at the time was that the Menhirs, the long stones, like this one at Le Champ d'Olent near Mont Saint-Michel, were the building blocks dropped by devils when they were building Mont Saint-Michel, that the archangel Michael had gathered them together and forced them to build this great shrine in his honor. Now, what historians have done is exhibited a complete lack of sense of discrimination with regard to the evidence. They, for instance, have these 18th century fairy tales about Neolithic monuments in Mont Saint-Michel, and they assume that since the monument is Neolithic, that the fairy tales themselves must in some way go back all the way to the Neolithic period. Also in the realm of fairy tales of the region concerns this mountain, Mount Dole. And from Mount Dole on a clear day, you can see Mont Saint-Michel off in the sea. It is said that Mount Dole, again a fairy tale of the 18th century, was the scene of a great battle between Michael and Satan. Because on Mount Dole, Satan attempted to build a rival shrine. But Michael did battle with him and defeated him right there on Mount Dole. Mont Saint-Michel is also making an appearance now in many so-called history books as the Island of the Dead the true home of the grail in medieval romances. And it is also said that somewhere deep in the caverns of the island is the repository of the secret Templar treasure that has never been found. Now, Mont Saint-Michel's history is interesting enough without going into flights of historical fantasy. So what we're going to do now is take a good look at some more sober assessments from historians, architects, and archaeologists for whom a flight of fancy would be tantamount to a near-death experience. So we'll bring this all down to earth.